This is my aunt painting. So basically, you know, all these people in my life taught me to have an interest in the natural world and taught me to be gentle. Ta she taught me to hand colour, actually. She, had, she used to hand colour photographs for a local photographer and she had a set of the little oils that they used to use back then. And um, there were books on how to hand colour, which is a step-by-step -step guide to ha how to hand colour. And um, I still have her little set. I kind of inherited it from her. In those days, they used to sell those kits as hobbyist kits, and that actually provide you with the photographs to hand colour. You didn't even have to make your own photographs. Anyway, as I, and my uncle used to shoot Super 8 movies, and he had this little room where he would edit them, and he'd make titles, and they were very into making their own little home movies. Um, so well, these people actually, you know, they taught me about art. They taught me about living a creative life. They taught me to be gentle. Uh, they taught me to love animals, um, and I guess they, you know, gave me this desire uh, to be an artist and, and the courage, I guess, in some ways, to be to be one. Um, here's some of their rescue animals. There was always all these animals that didn't understand what they were because they'd been brought up with other animals, so they all got along perfectly well. That's my auntie June with a big snake. Another big snake. <laughs> There's a snake theme here, I think. <laughs> anyway, just to finish off, um, I've actually dedicated this book to my mother, um, who's about to turn 80, and I'm very sorry she can't be here. She, I guess she'd love to be here, but she's getting too old to travel, and I'd hope that, you know, I sent her a book, the first book I got, I sent her, and she, um, she was delighted and touched and so forth, and, you know, read things that she really didn't know about what I thought about them all. And I'm hoping that she's here in spirit tonight. So that's it. That's my that's my final. <laughs>Oh, he's here, Jace Graff. Jace, would you identify yourself? The lady here wants to know whether you have any of the little uh, accordion books. Uh, sure. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> any other questions? Yeah, what were the symbols on the shower curtain? What were the symbols? You said, oh, I wish I had that shower curtain. No, it was just a curtain. No, it was just a 1950, lovely 1960s. But what were those little symbols? I don't know. They oh, just, I think they were just like... <laughs> No, no, I think they're just like you buy now at Ikea, you know, they're the revival of those decorative, uh, I don't know, mid-century forms. I thought they were going to be something wonderfully No, Australian. no, no. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. What do you do with the animals when they come out of the freezer? Paul buries them. <laughs> oh, thaw them out, yes, I have to thaw them out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Any yeah. pose? And I pose them with, with a lamp and a wine bottle, you know. <laughs> How did it first occur to you to take a photograph of a dead animal as a kind of memorial for that? Um, I think because I'd always uh, done a little bit of animal rescue unofficially where you try and, you know, bottle feed a thing or a bird or whatever and put it back in its nest and, and I'm always sad when it dies because often they do. And... Um, what you've got in your hand is a is a beautiful, beautiful little corpse, basically, is what I talk about. And I guess as an artist, as a photographer, my immediate reaction is to want to make a record of it. So I decided I would prop it up in front of the camera and make a picture of it. And in the book, I talk about how when I did this and made it life-size or human scale, it was remarkable for what, how it changed, how it became this sort of personality in a way, because of the way we anthropomorphise when we look at something's face, it has a gesture or expression or whatever, and I was totally blown away that by making a big human scale portrait, you gave it this, um, you know, th this sense of itself and dignity maybe, I don't know. But for the record, you know, it's like an individual thing. It's not just a dead specimen anymore. Yes. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> almost all the work that we're seeing here and almost all of your work involves 
living things that have died. But there's a series in there, the, 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 uh, was it Principles of Mathematics? Yeah, Laws of Physics. Yeah. The Laws yeah. of Physics, okay. right. And I'm, I'm wondering if that was a sort of a one-off project or if, or if you're also drawn to to well, I live you, with you, a scientist. Using your approach with other I live with a scientist, and I have to hear every day about <laughs> pi, and about you know how beautiful the gravity is, and blah blah blah. And I've got <laughs> <laughs> Fermi's last theorem. And <laughs> anyway, I what happened was when I first met Paul, what was very attractive was that he was he had all this range of knowledge. Uh, um, that was completely different from mine, and it was stuff that I'd ignored and, and missed out in my sort of much more art-oriented education, and was kind of scared of it because it was, to me, it was sort of secret and very male and, you know, beyond me. And, and so when I met him, he's a great popularizer of science. So besides doing uh, crit photography criticism, he's very good at telling lay people how the universe works <laughs> and how beautiful it all is. And, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so actually, I thought he was a good person to have in one's life because he could explain sort of everything. You know, like if you needed to know how the television worked, you could ask Paul and he would tell you in, in about, you know, a minute and a half before you got bored. But it was good to know that stuff. So, so I decided, because he used to go on and on about how beautiful it all was, um, that, and I didn't know about it and I wanted to, I would, I would re recreate the laws of physics and the principles of mathematics using sort of household objects mm -hmm. um, as simply as possible, but make them as beautiful as possible and make them kind of dark and mysterious and theatrical, which is how I kind of felt about them, but also understand them in my own way. Mm -hmm. and, and as I said, like it's gestured towards the fact that he, he th thought of it as beautiful like I thought of, you know, a Rothko was beautiful in a way. Like, does that answer your question? So that was kind of a one-off, one but it was to do with the fact that I was thinking about all that stuff that I hadn't really understood and I'd missed out on and all that stuff. And my association with him, you know, it just sort of all came together. And well, I, guess, I guess underneath the question is the question, are, are, is your plan to do the entire zoological and botanical <laughs> uh, uh, no. repertoire? <laughs> no. Or do, or, do you, or do you see or impulses to move towards other subject matter or even other styles? Um, yeah, I, I sort of do whatever comes along that interests me at the time and it can be different things. It's, mm -hmm. it's really whatever at the time, you know, I, I get fascinated with or whatever. But right now, the, really, the natural world, and that includes the laws of physics, uh, <coughs> is what I make art about. And I, joke, I jokingly say to Bill, I don't do any, I don't have people in my pictures. I'm not actually interested in in uh, sociology or, or cultural, you know, any documentation of I I anything to do with the human race doesn't like interest me nearly as much as, as the natural world, as the biological world and the physical world. You know what I mean? I'm much more interested in photographing a nice stone than I am ethnic Chinese. I don't know. <laughs> so when he shows me pictures that have got, you know, Mexican Azteca dancers, I sort of just pass through them and wait, wait for... <laughs> a nice tree picture and say, now that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I do, don't I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, I think, any more questions? Yeah. yeah. Can you talk just briefly about the materials and the process that take you from the photograph to the art? Well, it's pretty boring, but it's actually very simple. They're black and white photographs that I print, and, and as I said, you know, I'm still totally uh, traditional. I go into a dark room and I print these, so I don't use any digital materials of any kind. These are silver gelatin, in a larger, negative, the whole thing. And then I dry mount them to a piece of mat board. I tone them usually. Martha tones them. I forgot to say that most of what you see here, Martha Smith has fixed, toned, washed the works. So she knows more about it than I do. No. Anyway, so then I colour them. I take them into the studio and I put them on an easel and I start layering paint onto them. And I don't bother with the little tubes of the t tinting stuff. I just get big old tubes of oil paint and start putting it on transparent oil paint me on, in many layers. And then I go back with pencil and do pencil. I really use any medium that actually sticks to a photographic surface. And because they come out with new products all the time, artist products, I will buy you know various different crowns and 
Conte, you, you name it, pastels, is see how they go on photographic material if they stick, you know. So there's not really a, a process I can tell you about. It's pretty much anything that works. Okay, yeah. well, I'm going to stop her here because we have a big old batch of books to sell you all. <laughs> um, they're gorgeous, one foot by one foot, and the, the printing is fantastic. Every photograph you see in the show is in this book. They're for sale right over here, and we're going to have Kate back up in front where the name tags were, um, and she'll be signing, and y'all can ask her some more questions at that point. We'll probably move you fairly quickly, though, because some of us have to go home before dawn. Uh, but thank you all for coming. Kate, thank you so much. Thank you much. very much. So thank you, everyone. Thank you.